I think there was a music tech interview that was like pretty good in terms of like giving folks a bit of your history. But is it safe to say you kind of came into studios through being a musician? You started kind of programming, playing around with stuff, and that created opportunities yes. for you to then start working with people in studios. Absolutely, straight up from Jim Avis. Okay. <clears throat> from drumming and programming, and so, said, you know, you know, Logic, and I was going, y yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for, yeah, folks, for folks who don't know, like uh, especially like Jim is like one of the absolute legends in the UK. Um, does I mean he came up as he was part of like Nelly Hooper's crew originally, yeah. wasn't he? And then he's I mean had an incredible run as a producer and a mixer for like a very very long time. But so he basically like did you come in as a drummer? And then he was just asking if you could do other things, and you just said yes. Basically, yeah, well, he was kind of doing a band, his own band, and okay. so a drummer that could program. And I'd never seen Logic before. Right. Um, but I thought, come on, let's give it a go. So I went around my friend's house and and he showed me some things. Then I came in two days later. <laughs> wow! Did enough? Did enough to make Jim think that I knew it? So and then did, did the same thing with Pro Tools. Was Actually, it literally um, like, can you come back in? We we need someone to program in a couple of days. Can you do it? Yeah, just come and do audition, drumming and programming. So oh, make okay. a beat and then play some drums. And they were like, cool, you're in. I was like, hey, great. wow. Okay, amazing. So and then we, I met about six months after that. I had to start learning Pro Tools and met a mutual friend, uh, Neely. Oh my God, okay. Uh, who I hustled for about nine months to show me anything on Pro Tools. And right. eventually did. That right. was super helpful. Yeah. Okay, so so at that point, were you like working almost exclusively with Jim? Or were you then just yeah. suddenly like the word was out that you were around? No, I was just working with Jim. But got on okay. very well with Tools. Got really quick and started to get some gigs. Uh just in Pro Tools culminating in about, I don't know, early 2000s doing the Shakira session where everyone else had got fired because they were too slow. So huh. I thought, wow, I've done it. Okay, this is cool. I'm in. Right. And it's a couple of other people you all know who were the fast kind of guys. You, mm -hmm. you were you were doing, I think, one of the main projects you're doing about that time. Um, and so I thought, oh, I can do this. And then the entire ass fell out of the music industry <laughs> about then. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh there's, uh, the M box came out, which is what right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was an interesting time, wasn't it? That that the kind of few year period where Pro Tools got powerful enough to run sessions, but it wasn't yeah. like standard in studios yet. Yeah. Totally. And uh, so it sounds like both of us, in a way, like benefited from that kind of little shift in the power balance. I'm really interested, Emery. Like when you you came in as a drummer, right? So I guess you would have up to that point in your life, you're like used to playing in bands. Is that a fair yeah. statement? And uh, how did yeah se sessiony kind of things? But yeah. Okay, yeah. so you were still spending a lot of time in studios. Yeah, I'd be I was comfortable playing in the studio. Okay, sure. cool. So, so in a way, you had well, not in a way, you you were already comfortable the whole like session language, how to hang out in the studio, how to get stuff done, yeah. the whole feeling before yeah. you started. And I've been programming for years. Maybe. Okay, but you what know. by how by the time you were doing stuff with Jim or or oh yeah 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 I've been programming. Uh, I got my first sort of proper bigger drum session by being able to use the S3000, if you remember. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, but, so so hey, so were you, was it just that you had to learn Logic in two days, or then you? Yeah, I used to use I used Cubase. Uh, oh, so were you like kind of old school Atari, Atari and, and an Atari <coughs> kind yeah. of crew? Okay, great. I thought it was literally like you had never programmed in your life, no, or never be, switched that, a computer that'd on. That would be a hell of a that would be a hell of a move. No, but I I I'm <laughs> recorded audio. That you. Okay, I'd use an Atari. Right, yeah, right. it was a pretty, it was a big, big jump. Okay, so you're, so you're very used to like, is it safe to say then you're like used to music technology, used to people, used to session yeah. dynamics, and then it was just a case of starting yeah. to kind of run sessions more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the session dynamics thing was just more common sense than anything else. Right, it's right. Like, Fair know enough. your place. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, in in that sense, like, um, how how was it? How did it feel like switching places? Like, as your career evolved? Uh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's all a bit weird, that, isn't it? But um, <laughs> so, some of it's uh, some of it's useful. So the bit about not putting people off is useful, and the bit about you know not changing the complex dynamics you don't understand in the session by saying something that you haven't really thought through, but that you think is a good idea. I kind of and all for people not doing that. Okay, but so can you unpack that a bit more for us? Like, yeah, sure. like um, when you say like not putting people off. Well, like you, you might think that you've got a great idea for a middle eight, mm -hmm. 
and you're an assistant in the room and you really, it is really good, like a really good idea. And uh, you're definitely good enough to play it and you could definitely show them. And no one's really saying anything and everyone's looking slightly sort of like, no, I don't really know. But what's actually going on is the producer's almost certainly guiding the session in ways that you might not notice and have, a, have an overall vision and is being very quiet while he lets or she lets the artist work out that they're right, that the producer's right, or <laughs> or that they're, they really want to try their idea, so they've got to let them try their idea before they realise it's terrible, or they try their idea and then everyone likes it. The last thing they need is you chiming in with your idea, confusing it and disrupting what might be quite a non-vocal process, for example. That's one thing I'd say. I love that, and I love that you mentioned that, because um, I think... No one ever really talks about that aspect of running sessions. Do you know what I mean? And what makes yeah, a session yeah. work? Um, and I was, I was actually thinking about this last night before I passed out, even on like Complete Producer Network. I don't have a topic about like the art of production, which is really like understanding that dynamic. It's like it's like the weird voodoo, and no one no one really teaches it. No. Uh, but it's really something that you have to learn and be sensitive to, isn't it? Even though, I don't know if you were like yeah. literally sitting there going like, oh, I must learn the art of the voodoo. It's just like... <laughs> um, uh, I've never been an assistant, so that was one thing. That yeah. I, I got to observe that and got to observe people really, you know, mucking up cataclysmically. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> oh God, don't do that. Don't say that. Totally. Go, or, or, you know, or the, or the opposite of being on your phone or computer now. Mm -hmm. So I've... You know, I'm relatively passive when it comes to being extremely annoyed in the studio. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've, like, I remember like with one studio with the assistant who just kind of checked out. He was really good, but he just checked out mm -hmm. and uh, of all the sessions. And I remember sort of looking through the glass at him as I was trying to follow his patching through, looking at him mm -hmm. as I was trying to work out what cables he'd patched where. Then looking at him again as I walked all the way around back into the control room. I start pulling patch cables out to try and work out because it wasn't labelled properly. Right. Where something was. Got looking at him. You all right? You yeah, fine. Well, cool, great. <laughs> yeah. It's like the whole session stopped. He hadn't, didn't notice. Didn't stop. Didn't go and help. Yeah. You know, yeah. That that kind of stuff is the other end of that. Which is like, please interject here. Totally. Tell me, tell me yeah. where this is plugged in and why it's not coming out now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's fascinating, isn't it? Uh, one, one of, I, I think it's almost like this thing of figuring out how you can be helpful in any situation to an appropriate amount to a point where people realize like you're dependable, right? Because I'm sure you've had the thing where yeah. you go to a session or you go to a studio and if there's a great assistant, it's yeah. just like that person and, you, and you'll just kind of like remember them for years <laughs> yeah. to come, right? Or ever. They made a session based on your template that has yeah. all the correct IO rather than doing it while you're there. Yeah. It's like, this is like 10 minutes work when you're quietly by yourself setting up a session and Mm -hmm. half an hour of messing around when you're trying to plug cables in and someone's on the rig as well and just like yeah. basic stuff like that yeah is or if it... you totally yeah you turn up you're trying to like chat with your musicians or your artist as well yeah. while that's happening yeah well i'm trying to work out i own shouting where 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 am i putting this or yeah or just do it and then they have to unpick it all you know there's no yeah. efficient way of doing it there yeah. isn't just somebody else getting in setting it all up I mean, it's really basic, but it doesn't happen quite a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is wild, isn't it? So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's really like you just need people like have the most basic level of competence, both on like a human level and on yeah. a technical level. And there's always yeah. that thing about like anticipating as well, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. The anticipation, that's, that, that's what makes the, that's that, like, that's about being great when you, you, you find the assistance. It's a really classic, boring thing to say mm -hmm. in some ways, but it's like, I didn't have to ask them anything. Yeah. But totally. that, that goes right up to being a producer. I was about to say, yeah, totally. Like yeah. <laughs> this is this is a lesson that like lasts the rest of your life, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, so hang on a minute. Uh, so if no one has to ask me anything, that's probably good, right? Yeah. And you go, yeah, that is very good <laughs> because um, that means that you know you're doing the right thing and you're in tune with what people want, and that's what people love to feel mm -hmm. like. They love to feel that you're kind of in tune with them. Yeah. I think that's the most, uh, that's the most sort of exciting thing for an artist in some ways when they yeah. feel, well, not every artist, because there's so much difference in artists, but, mm -hmm. but if they can feel maybe you understand what they want, even if they don't. Yeah. Yeah. That could, that can be great. 
and and if I have sort of going back to an assistant or something, if I feel the assistant kind of gets what I'm aiming for, mm -hmm. that's really fantastically reassuring for me. It, it's amazing, yeah. So you you almost like need people to be a little bit psychic, but you don't have to actually be psychic, do you? It's no, just like just no. be a little bit tuned into what's going on, what might happen. And I love what you're saying as well, like also having an understanding about like you might have all these ideas, but you need to know if and when it's the right point. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. they're really valuable as well, you know. Yeah. And it's usually a really big clue about whether it's a valuable idea or if it's time to do it. Because obviously it will be something like, what do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty it's usually pretty explicit that yeah that kind of thing oh my god and actually i have to say like um one of the Sorry. most ninja assistant moves i've ever seen happening is the assistants who are astute enough to recognize when there is a, a dynamic that needs to be resolved in an other way and someone is trying to then use the assistant to like cast a vote one way or the other oh uh, yeah that's very clever and stuff. if anyone on here is ever an assistant the ninja move in that case is to go oh i'm sorry i wasn't listening what's up yeah <laughs> yeah uh but yeah <laughs> it's all it's it's very 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 nuanced art but i mean i love i love that you just immediately connected that straight with like what you're doing as a producer and um i mean so so do you have I know this is all very intuitive, but this whole process of kind of like getting on an artist's wavelength and getting a sense yourself for where they're at and like what they need. And do you do you have any like kind of ninja tips you can share on that side? I know it's not a case of downloading yeah. a plugin, it, but it's mainly it's mainly the case of going to rallyandraw.com <laughs> and letting. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's um, it, uh, listening. I think it's all about listening, like just like music. You know, you mm -hmm. listen to what they're they're saying, mm -hmm. and and then either with experience most of the time, listen to what the artist is saying, and then evaluate whether what they're saying is actually what they're saying, or if what they're saying is stuff they're just saying, but they mean something else, which might be deliberate or not not deliberate. Then establish a kind of like sort of level of competency between you and them as to what you think they mean and then does this thing that they mean actually relate to the music which is very interesting sometimes about how oh. different differently an artist perceives their music to how you and possibly the entire world perceives it like on a basic level i'm really cool you're not it's not cool at all but it's quite <laughs> commercial you know so that that kind of like by cool do you mean like edgy and underground yeah or, I'm, I'm right. edgy, underground and like yeah. really with it go that's not the case but uh -huh. i understand you now think that so that is now very firmly placed in my communication sort of um my communication kind of set up with you is that that is a big factor now it's like mm -hmm. you you are interested in that even though what you do is definitely nothing to do with that and that's not mm -hmm. the good bit about what you do or the exciting thing or the the artistic thing about what they do so you have to kind of frame what how you communicate with them or just say no you're not and then either don't do the session or do depending <laughs> they might, some people might like that yeah yeah it's just, every, every nuance of that is is possible so do but you I think do you feel like there's some people where it's like you really just try and 100 percent get on the same language and the same wavelength and is it other situations where you're like acting as an interpreter and you have an internal translator about if they say this it means this to yeah. you and i think we're getting yeah. into some heady philosophical stuff about like what is subjectivity and whose experience is the same and do we all yeah. see the same color green or whatever yes exactly that comes up a lot doesn't it yeah um like there's a great story uh, which I'm going to steal from my uh, legendary producer friend of mine who's absolutely just a font of amazing stories and experience. But he said he spent a whole session with someone going, make it warmer. Right. You know, make, it, make it warmer. And he was just going, trying everything to make this keyboard warmer. Yeah. And to cut, cut he, he tells it for quite a long time and it's, it's really funny, but um, he's going, warmer, you know. <laughs> warmer. <laughs> just, ah. Okay, <laughs> we're like <laughs> steam coming off the top, so lots of top ends yeah. or something. Oh lots my of god, top end. Yeah, let's that's amazing.